Well, my name's Roy Guerin, and I'm married to Deborah Guerin, who I met here back in 1983 when I showed up at Creekside after retiring from the Air Force. Uh, we left about two years later after we got married and uh, went to Tampa, then trundled around the world with the Navigators. Came back in 2002 to do ROTC ministry at the University of Florida and been back ever since, except for a two year break when we went back to Germany for two years, 2012 through 2014. Being a ripe old 81 years old, I've been a lot more careful than probably than most people in staying home, wearing my mask and not getting involved outside the house. So I spent a lot more time at home which had a phenomenal impact on my relationship with the Lord. My quiet times morphed from 30 minutes into an hour average and then sometimes much longer. Interestingly enough, uh, early on in COVID, I took a creative songwriting workshop, which is kind of mind blowing. I don't know what I was doing actually, but I took that workshop and uh, Kelly McRae led it. And she and another gal that I was reading wrote a book called The Artist's Way. And both uh, Kelly and Julia Cameron, the, the author, strongly recommended uh, writing morning pages, which is three pages every day of uh, stream of consciousness writing. I began to do that. And in the book, The Artist's Way, Julia quoted a couple of gals who, one of them said uh, she looked at the morning pages as prayer. And then a nun in the next paragraph said she looked at it as meditation. And I said, voila, I don't know about the rest of you, but my little brain, if I try to pray, close my eyes and pray for a minute, my little brain's pinging off the wall. I cannot focus. So I began to write out my prayers in the morning pages and began to also reflect on my quiet times, which had a profound impact on my quiet times, revolutionized my quiet times. One Saturday morning in the quiet time was third workshop that Kelly was doing. I had a particularly good quiet time. It all had to do with uh, God's story, my story, how they intersected, how they intersected. And uh, so I went to the workshop on Zoom. Kelly said, uh, I want you to take your best morning pages and I want you to circle some phrases that are significant to you. So I did that and then she said, I want you to take 15 minutes and I want you to write a poem using those phrases. And I kid you not, in 15 minutes, I wrote a 16 line, four stanza poem, a never to be accomplished again. And that was the first one I'd ever written. And the poem was all about uh, his story, my story, how they intersected, how I'm to tell his story till the end of my time, which was the title of the poem, poem till the end of my time. Up until that time, I had been thinking about uh, writing some memoirs for my son. And they were gonna be mostly about Vietnam experiences. You know, When I had that quiet time and wrote that poem, it totally changed my, my direction with his memoirs. I believe God, I still believe he is leading me to write a book about his story, my story, and our story. It's still to my son and for my son. And whatever he wants to do with it after that, it, it's up to him, but it's mainly for my son. And he even said at one point, when he knew it, found out I was writing the story. He said, well, I can't wait to read it. Because he said, I wonder what it is that has kept you so strong in your faith all these years. I believe that my most fruitful years are ahead of me. I'm 80 years old, I feel like Moses in a way. I spent 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years getting prepared. Now I'm doing what I'm really supposed to be doing. Of course, I'm not gonna last another 40 years, I don't think. That will be a miracle. But God is never through with us. He's, he's always teaching, he's, he's always getting us ready, you know, to go be with him. He's teaching us stuff about himself. Um, and I'm more excited about being alive now than I ever have been in the past. It's, uh, it's great.